Tippy time my damies, Tuckat here and welcome back to the channel. I've made a shit ton of build videos since I began this channel. Some are great for night balls, some are great for raids, and some are just great for ability spamming your way through some seasonal content. However, many people I've found have come to realize the struggle with swapping their mods around from encounter to encounter. Hands up, who has been waiting at the start of say a totems encounter for five minutes for someone to swap their mods around. Hands up if that could even possibly be you. It's for that reason that today's build is focused on our hunter running one set of armor across four separate subclasses. So we can swap our subclasses out when we need to for say this GM or that nightfall whilst keeping the same mods on our same set of armor. I'll segment out the timeline if you're looking for a particular subclass but all the subclass builds will follow and dims will be in the description below. If you do enjoy the content, please hit that thumbs and consider subscribing. Without further ado, let's get into the video. The exotic I've chosen to use is the 6 Coyote. This might seem quite basic at heart, but it embellishes one of the truest attributes of the Hunter, which is the Dodge class. This essentially just gives us a second dodge. And the first subclass we're going to deep dive into will be our Revenant Hunter. We will be using the Winter Shroud Stasis Aspect, dodging slows nearby targets. When you slow a target, it has slowed ability regeneration and reduced weapon performance. Slowed combatants have difficulty firing accurately, and if you have enough slow stacks, they will become frozen. And with the 6 Coyote giving us two dodges, we now have the ability to freeze on demand. Because we have several shade steps in our back pocket, we are also going to be using the Gambler's Dodge. So we simply dodge next to an enemy and this is going to fully recharge our melee ability. This pairs perfectly with the Winter Shroud aspect. Because we can just get right up in their face, do a dodge, slow them, freeze them. It gives us a melee ability to chuck in their face. And it also has one of the best dodge animations as well, in my opinion. Allowing you to get right up there, then get far away, chuck a melee in their face, and keep those slow stacks and frozen stacks coming. For our melee, of course, we are using the Withering Blade. It is the only melee available to our hunter. The Shuriken gives you two charges and can ricochet off multiple targets. We use this in conjunction with Grim Harvest Stasis Aspect. Defeating slowed or frozen combatants creates stasis shards. These shards grant melee energy when picked up by you or your allies. So we got both our dodge and our melee generating these stasis shards. When we dodge we only get one melee charge back so the crystals will top up the second one. We also had the dust build grenade. So when targets get trapped inside this they get slowed and will freeze over time as well. Enemies affected by this grenade will also create these stasis shards which is great in terms of that loop that makes the shards that feeds our abilities. At 100 discipline these grenades come back in 24 seconds so stupidly high uptime with these and the rest of the abilities to keep those melees flowing. The Silencer score is currently the only super in the Revenant Hunter's arsenal. Uh, one slows and one freezes doing damage. Here's hoping they bring out a second one at a later date, a 2.0 perhaps. But I do really like this super, it's great in this situation here in the Prophecy as I can do damage to both the boss and keep the surrounding adds at bay whilst I just melt into them. The first of our fragments will be Whisper of Durance. Slow from your abilities lasts longer. For those abilities that linger, the duration will also increase. So this is whenever we do a dodge, whenever something's trapped in a grenade, it's particularly strong there. But you know, we can chuck a double shuriken, get that free stack on it and it's going to stay there plenty good. You see it bounce those shurikens, all three of those targets are affected and they're going to stay that way for longer. That way I can just take my time and melt them at my own leisure. We will be using Whisper of Refraction, defeating slowed or frozen targets grants us class ability energy. So we have the ability to have two lots of shurikens and two lots of dodges. Our grenades come back in 24 seconds so you can see the level of stasis carnage we can cause because we're always stacked up with multiple charges and quick cooldowns so we can just slow down the field of play at ease whisper conductions is going to bring those stasis shards and they're going to track directly to you you also get a bonus to resilience with this so very good as when things are slowed watch that come towards you now i get that bonus 
ability energy and I can go back to attack. Whisper of Rhyme, when we collect those stasis shards, is going to grant a small amount of overshield. This falls off after 10 seconds, but with those shards constantly tracking towards you, it's constantly going to be resetting the timer and giving you more and more overshield. This is technically a void overshield, but it is still very, very good in terms of keeping you alive. But things are going to be frozen most of the time. Anyway, rush in there, get your overshield, get your stats, get your grenades, your melee, your dodge back. Now we're going to turn to our armor mods. We're going to be using these across all our subclasses. On our armor, we're going to use a solar affinity and explosive well maker. So we rapidly defeat combatants with explosive damage and this will spawn a solar elemental well. We'll also have plenty of space for our ammo finder mods. On our legs, another solar affinity. We're using well of life. So when we pick up that solar well, it's going to give us healing for 10 seconds and there's plenty of space for scavengers. All four of these builds have the potential to do explosive damage and the pairing of the healing is very good particularly when you're trying to solo things you want to get into danger and out of danger as soon as possible with as much health as possible so healing very very good we are also using thermoshock plating to give yourself a little bit of resistance amongst all the damage we are using a void affinity armor piece with a reaping well maker after activating your dodge ability which we're dodging an awful lot our next weapon final blow will give us a void elemental well we use that well with well of tenacity picking up this void elemental well will reduce the damage you take from combatants for a short period of time this is a five second window but you're always dodging you're always shooting things so you're always getting that extra resilience as well which really comes in handy when you've got to get into danger nice and quick Go in there, dodge in there, pick up their resilience, and you're out safe on the other side. Both these mod combinations have long been staples, particularly when I'm soloing things, and I find they're really good in in-game stuff, because you really do want a level of resistance and healing, no matter what activity you are doing. My gauntlets, I'm running Focusing Strike times 2. This grants class ability when we do damage with our melee. It doesn't matter what melee it is, whether it's Void, Stasis, Solar. It's all going to count the same and you're going to get that extra dodge ability. On our class item we're equally using utility kickstart times two. So when we use our dodge we get extra dodge ability in return. The last mod slot is a little bit of a free choice. I tend to use the melee well maker. I find this particularly good on your solar subclass as every time you get a melee kill it's going to drop a solar well and that's just more healing and the more healing you got the better but Apart from that, all other subclasses can get melee kills and benefit from this. Regardless of what elemental well it is, it's still ability energy at the end of the day that it gives you. They're not just there to proc your mods, so it doesn't really matter what you use. In GMs, for example, or Nightfalls, I might use the Shield Crash Well Maker, just so when you break an elemental shield, it's going to drop an elemental well, then again feeding your ability energy. You might want a font of might in there if you're trying to do a bit of burst dps so that is another great option on top of that as well the second subclass we are diving into is the solar guy he's been a little bit forgotten as when we had solar 3.0 season we had classy restoration and that was all the rave but to me personally i don't really miss it that much it was all about the ignitions for me so this build is focused on making things go pop there's still plenty of wells to go around so we can always get that healing, so I'm not really worried about Classy Restoration no more. We start off with the On Your Mark Solar Aspect. Precision Final Blows grants you and nearby allies increased weapon handling and reload speed for a short duration. This stacks up, but we get this free when we dodge. We're dodging all the time, this is a 6 Cody build, so we always have this increased weapon handling and reload available to us. Now on paper this doesn't sound all that exciting, but gunplay is pretty much the best play so the sooner you can get to your gun after a dodge the better it's going to be we will also be using the knock and down solar aspect this pretty much states that your supers are going to be even superior but we want to use this whilst we are radiant final blows with your equipped throwing knife fully refund your melee energy so you can just keep on endlessly throwing knife after knife after knife as long as you're getting the kill with it of course just in case we're ever shy of knives, we will also be using the Gambler's Dodge. So again, we dodge next to an enemy and that's going to load up another volley of knives there. So we can just keep on dodging, melee, dodge, melee, dodge, melee, and they all go pop. My melee choice for this is the knife trick. It's a little 
lot of fan knives. This has both Scorch and Ignite, so if you stack up enough Scorch stacks, you're going to get an Ignition. Equally, you could use the Weighted Throw Knife, but I find generally I'm in close proximity and the Weighted Throw Knife just handles that a little bit easier. When it comes to your grenades, I've got two options that I use, one being the Swarm Grenade. This is a lot safer grenade, so you can do your fan knife, do the grenade, and you get that nice explosion. Trip mine is a little more violent, but it does reach Scorch stacks a lot higher and a lot easier. I just find it tends to be a little bit more dangerous, so you want to kind of keep clear and make sure that that trip mine is not facing you when it goes off. Otherwise, it will pop not just the enemies, but you as well. For my super, I am using blade barrage, but feel free to use whatever you want. I just find this works a little bit better because with this setup I generally am in closer proximity and the blade barrage just tends to work a little bit easier. I don't have to aim it ne nearly as much as say a precision golden gun. The damage value still put blade barrage at the top but if you're say running with a team the dead shot might be good for generating orbs for your fire team so it really comes down to activity what you're doing. Our first fragment is going to be Ember of Torches. Powered melee attacks against combatants make you and nearby allies radiant. This gives you a nice little damage buff that will allow you to do that little bit more DPS. It works great for DPS phases, whether you're doing a boss fight or if you just want a general run and gun, it'll just help you with your weapon play pushing that damage over the line. Next fragment, Ember of Singeing. Your class ability recharges faster when you scorch targets. Our knife, grenade, everything scorches targets, so we're going to have plenty of class ability to activate that dodge. So we're always chucking knives because we're always dodging. Ember of Ashes, you apply more Scorch stacks to targets. This just makes it easier when you're chucking down your grenades and your knives and everything to get that ignition activated. You know, sometimes you might need to bury knives into them if you don't have this mod in order to get the ignition. But with this, it just gives you a little more leeway. Ember of Char, your solar ignition spreads Scorch to affected targets. That way when you get one bad guy go popcorn, the next bad guy is also going to go popcorn. And Ember of Eruption is pretty much going to make your solar ignitions have increased area of effect. A much bigger boom. For our next subclass we'll be moving over to Arc, but I just want to quickly break down Jolt a little bit. So once we've jolted a target, it's going to do the additional Jolt damage, in this case it's 6-2. So we can do that with either weapon, ability, it doesn't matter, it's always going to do that tick damage, you see it's 6-2, 6-2, 6-2 and that's because we've got the anarchy planted on it and it's just constantly doing that additional jolt damage. So with this I want to use the Tempest Strike and you see it's just consistently doing that 6-2 every single time. So this build is focused around using the Tempest Strike to jolt our targets. So as stated, the Tempest Strike Arc Aspect, while sliding, activate a charge melee ability to unleash a devastating uppercut attack. This travels along the ground and will jolt a target that it damages. Now being that we primarily want to use the Tempest Strike as our main source of melee, I've opted to use a disorientating blow. So when we strike an enemy with this melee, it blinds him and it will amplify me. You could use the combination blow if you so wish but I like having this as a back pocket just in case you need to stop something in its tracks so you can continue your reign of terror. And yes, once more we are going to be using the Gambler's Dodge so when we dodge Nick to something it's going to give us that melee charge. We are using the 6 Coyote after all and we want as many abilities as we can and this is great so we've actually got two different types of melees we can use. We can punch something in the face to blind it or we can do our Tempest Strike to jolt everything in the surrounding targets. And I like this because we can use the jolt to clear hordes of ads or we can use it to do DPS to something, we jolt it and then just lay down something like a wither horde on it and it'll do that continual tick damage. And wither horde is actually one of my favourite weapons to use on this class. We will be using the flow state arc aspect. Defeating a jolted target makes you amplified. Whilst you're amplified, your dodge recharges more quickly. This will allow us to get more charges with our gambler's dodge. You are more resilient whilst you are dodging as well. And I have to say I really do appreciate being amplified. Getting that additional speed boost that can just make you zip around the stage really does come in handy. When it comes to your grenade options I have been using the storm grenade. This grenade calls down a focus lightning storm. I find this the best in terms of time to get it, another one, and damage overall. 
primarily you want the jolt and that can happen with any grenade but I find this is the best combination of cooldown and damage and jolt. So as stated we will be using Sparker Shock, our arc grenades will jolt targets additionally. This is one of the primary benefits compared to your traditional dodge punch dodge punch build. This we can jolt from afar with both our temper strike and our grenade. We will be using Spark of Recharge. Whilst critically wounded, your melee and grenade energy regenerate more quickly. And Spark of Focus, after sprinting for a short duration, your class ability will regenerate a lot faster as well. So all of our abilities will be regenerating stupidly quick. We've got a speed booster, so we're always amplified and just zipping around class ability after class ability so we can just continually jolt things non-bloody stop. And lastly, we'll be running Spark of Resistance. Whilst you're surrounded by combatants, you are more resistant to incoming damage. This is a good 30% resistance, so really good. Particularly that being that we are diving in there to get those abilities regenerating quickly. So we get into danger, don't worry, we've got resistance, get those abilities up, and then we can just continue spamming Jolt at all the surrounding targets. Dodge, resistance, spam again. So really good at add clear and we've got plenty of resistance to just tank whatever they chuck at us. We're of course going to be utilizing the gathering storm super, it's great for boss DPS and we tend to have plenty of add clear covered with this so we don't really require the traditional pole dancer. And last but by no stretch of the imagination least is our void hunter. We will start with the vanishing step, void aspect, simply dodge to make you invisible. The 6 Coyote has long been one of my favourite exotics to use on the Void Hunter. It has the highest amount of uptime for invisibility that you can get. Higher than the Grafalcons, Omninoculus, all of them. Again, we will be utilising the Gambler's Dodge, Dodge next to an enemy, and this is going to give us a free Smoke Bomb. Smoke Bomb will attach to surfaces, it pings enemy radar, and weakens targets with detonation. The Invis Dodge is great and makes you feel like a ninja, but it's the next Void aspect that truly makes this weapon. Stylish Executioner. Defeating a weakened, suppressed or volatile target grants you invisibility and true sight. After performing a stylish execution, your next melee attack while invisible weakens targets. So this aspect creates the gravy train of invisibility. Essentially you just chuck void shit all over everything and it's gonna make you invisible once you kill it. You dodge next to something it gives you another void smoke. We've always got dodges, we've always got smoke, so we've always got the potential to go invisible, and that doesn't stop there. We also had the Vortex Grenade. I use this grenade, I think it's the best one, best general cooldown per damage, does great air clear as well, because it pulls the targets in. And this too synergizes with our Stylish Executioner, so we can just bank a grenade on something, kill it, and we will then go invisible. Now the Void Hunter might not feel as raw and visceral as some of the other subclasses, but it definitely makes up for it in stealth. Particularly in in-game content, having the ability to just disappear really does come in handy and just allows you to buy that time. We're going to be using Echo of Undermining. Your Void Grenades will weaken targets. This is great if we just want to chuck down some extra DPS on whether it's boss or adds. Works on either. Echo of Instability, defeating targets with grenades, grants volatile rounds to your Void weapons. Now volatile rounds were all the rage when Void 3.0 was initially launched, but it's kind of fallen into obscurity, and I don't quite understand why. It's really good DPS, and everyone's got their favourite Void weapon to choose from. Mine, personally, is the Unforgiven SMG. This comes with Repulsive Brace and Demolitionist, so I can keep on beating those grenade kills, so I can keep on getting volatile rounds. Repulsive Brace is such a good perk and it's so nice, particularly on a Hunter. I've got Weaken, Invisibility and Overshield now. Particularly good in situations like this where this Boomer is just shooting a wall, doesn't know what's going on, but I can still take splash damage. So that Overshield does come in handy regardless of the fact that I am invisible or not. The Collective Obligation, the Vow Exotic Pulse Rifle is also a really good option as I can spread that weaken around and use the Stylish Executioner to go in and out of invisibility as well. Echo of Persistence, Void Buffs applied to you, in this case Invisibility, Overshield or Devour have increased duration. We're using Invisibility and if we use a Repulsive Brace we're also using Overshield so those will be increased in duration. 
We're also using echo of dilation, so whilst we're crouched, we sneak faster and gain enhanced radar resolution. Now this is more of a comfort of life one. You don't have to have this one for the build. I just enjoy it. If you want to say like do finishes, turn invisible, that's another great option. But if there is one you like, feel free to mix it up right here. When it comes to the supers, both the tethers are great options. Deadpool is great if you want to do extended DPS debuff damage. And it's also great if there's a horde of ads around, it'll pick those up as well, help clear the field so you can go in there and go nuts. I use the Mobius Quiver in situations where it's pretty much just straight up boss DPS, you're not having to worry about ads, and I just want to get that damage out so I can get into my weapon gameplay. So hopefully if you guys are stuck around to the end, you can kind of see the diversity of the different elements. Whilst we're still rocking the same set of armor, we got these all set up so we can run them depending on what activity we are in. And this makes it a lot easier. Sometimes we need a sneak, sometimes we just want to be chucking endless uh, amounts of melees into people's faces, get that radiant up so we can do extra damage. Sometimes we need to slow down the rate of play, so stasis might be the greater option. So it really just comes down to looking at the easiest way to do the encounter and then just moving some things across. And when Bungie finally adds these into the game so we can save our utility straight away, it should be much easier. Anyway, my damies, that is the build for today. I hope you liked one of them, if not all of them. Hope you give it a go. Uh, chuck that thumb up if you did. Subscribe if you uh, want to see any further content. Uh, comment down below if you've got any questions or suggestions. And until next time, tippy tie, my damies. What a tie.